Hugh Hewitt is a conservative radio talk show host with Salem Radio Network and joins me now. Hugh, it's good to have you with me, and I know you were able to hear the interview I just had with Katrina Pearson saying that this is pretty much a, a media narrative that is being put out there. But it was back in late February uh, that Donald Trump brought this very issue up at a rally in Arkansas, said he was feeling hostility being directed at him by the judge and said, I believe he happens to be Spanish, which is fine. He's Hispanic, which is fine. And we haven't asked for a recusal, which we may do, but we have a judge that's very hostile, should have been thrown out, was thrown out, and I'd say I'd rather go to court. Uh, but we have Barry Bennett, Katrina Pearson, they're defending these remarks of Donald Trump and that this isn't any type of racial attack. What is your assessment of what this really means for the presumptive GOP nominee and how they're handling the controversy? Well, Thomas, look back at the last 35 minutes of your broadcast, excellent half hour. Uh, a very confident Hillary Clinton is consolidating the party. Bernie is planning his exit, or appears to be planning his exit. You had Gavin Newsom ecstatic over where the Secretary of State is sitting right now. And then you turn over to Mitch McConnell, who's in a crouch and getting assailed by questions, can't talk about the agenda. Paul Ryan tried to roll out an anti-poverty program today that was uh, months and weeks in the making and roll out, and not a word about it is being spoken. Uh, a bomb went off in Turkey today, killed 11 people, wounded 36 people in Istanbul, in the heart of a NATO ally's uh, most important region. And then Trump spokespeople, uh, no matter how elegant or, or eloquent or how good they are, are stuck in this first rule of holes, which is stop digging, and they have to keep talking about the judge. And I am reminded of the one good scene in a very bad movie, The Poseidon Adventure 2, when Richard Dreyfuss walks out on the deck of the cruise ship and sees a tsunami coming at him. And I, and I think Republicans are beginning to realize that this isn't just a Donald Trump problem, that it could be a catastrophic event for the party, that it could bring down not just the Senate or House Republican majority, so that is really in, in question now, but also state houses and governors across the land. And we'll get an early indicator of that tonight in California, because I think you'll see a lot of Republicans in marginal districts wiped out because of the combination of excited Democratic base turning out in record numbers and a depressed, reluctant, embarrassed Republican rank and file who don't turn out. So if you factor all that in and then you think to yourself, oh my gosh, it's June, what, what's ahead? You may indeed have mutiny and the hashtag mutiny is out there and it's the appeal to Speaker Ryan and Leader McConnell to gather governors and uh, other candidates who perhaps ran and come out and, and request that the Rules Committee in Cleveland make the first and second ballot advisory. So that, in fact, and they can do that, there's perfectly uh, legal, it puts them within compliance with state law, but to do what the Republican governors in 1964 met in Cleveland to do but could not do, which was to decide a way to avoid a catastrophic election loss. And right and now, Hugh, I hear Paul Ryan trying to get that out of Donald Trump, and it ain't showing up. Well, when it comes to Donald Trump, and this is probably one of his best assets and one of the worst things that works against him, is that he runs a never-surrender campaign. He is not going to apologize. He's not going to capitulate to any type of pressure. He is basically a party of one at the head of the Republican Party right now. But given this latest attack, do you think that there is buyer's remorse that is circulating inside the establishment? Or that this is just a moment in time, a hiccup once again, and they'll be able to get back on message with Trump as the standard bearer? Well, Leader McConnell said to me on my radio show last week that the Republican Party is not going to be changed by Donald Trump. And the policy proposal put out by Speaker Ryan is really the leader of the party in addition with M Mitch McConnell. Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee, but he's not the leader of the party. Their ideas aren't changing. They are not going to embrace his rhetoric. And in fact, Donald Trump asked his surrogates to go out and attack the judge. If the reports of that call are accurate, and I've seen no reason not to believe that they are, not one surrogate. Not Chris Christie, not the other, uh, no one who isn't paid have attacked that judge because no one can attack that judge. He's a good judge. There hasn't been a motion for recusal. If a motion for recusal was made, I've been practicing law for 30 years in California, it would not fly. Uh, it would not, absolutely could not fly because you can't recuse someone on the basis of statements made by a party to the litigant that would somehow trigger an automatic recusal. It doesn't work that way. And so I, I, I believe that what's happening is when no one follows your request when your surrogates have deserted you you'll get Chris Christie to say what I believe Donald Trump isn't a racist I don't think he is I've, I've interviewed him a dozen plus times I, I asked debate questions on four occasions not a scintilla of evidence that he has any kind of 
reflexive animosity towards individuals. I'd like to ask him, would you appoint Mexican Americans to the bench? I, to the bench, I think he'd say yes. I'd like to ask him if he'd appoint Muslim Americans to the bench. I think he'd say yes. These are important questions, but the, the hole he's digging is terribly deep. MSNBC political analyst Hugh Hewitt. Hugh, great to see you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Thomas.